So is it fair to say just like this idea that the laws of mathematics are discovered, they're latent within the fabric of the universe in that same way the laws of biology are kind of discovered? Yeah. I think that's absolutely, and, and it's, it's probably not a popular view, but I, I think that's right on the money, yeah. Well, I think that's a really deep idea. Then embryogenesis is the process of revealing, yeah. of um, embodying, of manifesting these laws. You're not building the laws. Yeah. You're just uh, creating the capacity to reveal. Yes. I think, again, not the standard view of molecular biology by any means, but I think that's right on the money. I'll give you a simple example. You know, some of our latest work with these xenobots, right? So what we've done is to take some skin cells off of an early frog embryo and basically ask about their plasticity. If we give you a chance to sort of reboot your multicellularity in a different context, what would you do? Because what you might assume by, by the, the thing about embryogenesis is that it's super reliable, right? It's very robust. And that really... Uh, obscures some of its most interesting features. We get used to it. We get used to the fact that acorns make oak trees and frog eggs make frogs. And we say, well, what else is it going to make? That's what it, you know, that's what it makes. That's a standard story. But the reality is, and, and so, and so you look at these, um, at these skin cells and you say, well, what do they know how to do? Well, they know how to be a, a passive, boring, two-dimensional outer layer, keeping the bacteria from getting into the embryo. That's what they know how to do. Well, it turns out that if you take these skin cells and you remove the rest of the embryo. So you remove all of the rest of the cells and you say, well, you're by yourself now. What do you want to do? So what they do is they form this little, um, this multi little creature that runs around the dish. They have all kinds of incredible capacities. They navigate through mazes. They have uh, various behaviors that they do both independently and, and together. They, uh, they have a, 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 basically they implement von Neumann's dream of, of self-replication because if you sprinkle a bunch of loose cells into the dish, what they do is they run around, they collect those cells into little piles. They, they sort of mush them together until those little piles become the next generation of xenobots. So you've got this machine that builds copies of itself from loose material in its environment. None of this are things that you would have expected from the frog genome. In fact, there's wild type, the genome is wild type. There's nothing wrong with their genetics. Nothing has been added, no nanomaterials, no genomic editing, nothing. And so what we have done there is engineer by subtraction. What you've, re what you've done is you've removed the other cells that normally basically bully these cells into being skin cells. And you find out that what they really want to do is is uh, to be this, uh, they, they want they, their default behavior is to be a xenobot. But in vivo, in the embryo, they get told to be skinned by these other cell types. And so, so now, so now here comes this, this really interesting question that you just posed. When you ask, where does the form of the tadpole and the frog come from? The standard answer is, well, it's, 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 it's a uh, selection. So over, over millions of years, right, it's been shaped to, to produce the specific body with that's fit for froggy environments. Where does the shape of the xenobot come from? There's never been any xenobots. There's never been selection to be a good xenobot. These cells find themselves in the new environment. In 48 hours, they figure out how to be an entirely different uh, proto-organism with new capacities like kinematic self-replication. That's not how frogs or tadpoles replicate. We've made it impossible for them to replicate their normal way. Within a couple of days, these guys find a new way of doing it that's not done anywhere else in the biosphere.